I'm Marty Otanias. Welcome to Getting High on Anthropology. Today we have a guest, Carla Boyd with Hemp Way Foods. Welcome to the show, Carla. Thank you, Marty. So you have a very unique uh, business that you're involved in. Um, you make uh, food uh, with hemp. So uh, first of all, it's great to have you here. Um, I want to educate myself, educate others. Um, tell us a little bit, a bit about your company. And then it's always interesting people's sort of origin stories. How did you come to this kind of business? Well, thank you so much. I, uh, it's kind of got a cool story behind it. I, I uh, well, first of all, I am Hemp Boy Foods. It's a uh, plant-based hemp food company. So basically, I use the hemp heart. The, so there's the outside of the seed, and then I use, and it's de-hole, in the de-holing process. So I use the inner white part, but I also use a little bit of hemp protein as well. Um, I have a hemp burger, and then a hemp crumble, which they're both basically the same product. It's just one's more, uh, one's loose and one's formed, more in a patty. And then I actually, I just am launching a new uh, hemp breakfast sausage. It's more of an Italian uh, flavor, a little savory. It's got a fennel and the, um, sorry, it's got, it's got fennel and Italian seasonings versus the spice that's in the burger. So very similar, but de a little more dedicated to like the breakfast, a little 2.5 ounce little breakfast sausage. And, and so take us back a bit, um, that moment when you realized doing this hemp um, food production and food catering, that was like your thing to do. Like where were you, what was going on, and what, what kind of like pushed you over the edge to get really deep into it? You know, in a lot of ways I tell people that my company chose me. I didn't choose my company. I have been in the cannabis industry since 2009. Uh, just by way of, I was a little more on the dispensary end. I ran a few dispensaries, um, a few different things like that, and I jumped more to the hemp side in 2011 and started with a program that started with an education piece on hemp, kind of touring around Colorado, trying to get farmers and just kind of educate the difference and understand that it's uh, food, fuel, and fiber. I fell in love with it in that aspect, but I didn't really understand the true food aspect, but I, I got really sick. I got what they called leaky gut. From, you can't absorb nutrition. Your whole body is one big inflamed item, and it, no matter what you eat, whether it's nutrient-dense foods or unhealthy foods, you're just not absorbing anything. So I kind of turned to what I was doing, which was hemp, um, and I just got in the kitchen and started creating, and before I knew it, I had the burger. It really helped my inflammation, because one of the key aspects of hemp is it, it really is a, a huge and anti-inflammatory uh, properties. So before, within a few months, I had kind of controlled my inflammation, I was starting to absorb nutrition, and friends started eating it, and then before I knew it, I just had a little small company I didn't really know where it was going to go. I, I, I literally didn't. All I knew was people were calling me. They were telling me how much they loved it. And it wasn't just about filling their stomach with food. It was nutrient-dense, wholesome food. It, it, it's Everything in it is crafted for a very specific nutritional meaning. Um, I, don't, I don't have soy lectins or sunflower lectins, and those aren't necessarily bad properties, but I, would, I wanted to keep it, it was very important for me to keep it a whole, um, whole plant foods. And so I perfected it over you know a few months, and then I got a commercial kitchen, and then a little over five years later, here I sit. The story about the origins of your company are so exciting and inspiring, but I'm sure there's been a couple hurdles that you've had to experience, and I want to really inspire others to sort of look at you as a role model. So why don't you tell us about one of the hurdles that you faced, and then how did you overcome it? There's been many hurdles. Let's pick one. <laughs> um, you know, one of the biggest hurdles is just trying to educate a lot of the, you know the people in general just on the differences because a lot of the confusion now is CBD is great love it but it's very different than hip nutrition 
um, I would definitely say that's one of the hurdles. Just and, and just educate, educate, educate. You can't you can't necessarily live on CBD, but you can live on hemp nutrition um, with the pure plant protein aspects. But you're probably talking more of starting a hemp business, and you know I would probably say really and truly um, a is banking. I mean, you're not going to be able to go get a small business loan more than likely, but there are some small resources out there. Uh, Mikasa Resource Center has been invaluable to me. Um, I took a business class through them, and through that, I was able to get a small business loan even though I was hemp. They fought for me and they got it approved. Pretty progressive. Yes, and they, like I said, they have been amazing. They've been a really good to my company. I love Mikasa. Um, they even call me uh, occasionally to do small little catering events for them because they love my food so much. And it's, it's so funny because a lot of people don't realize that they're not eating any meats or anything. And they'll come up to me afterwards going, wow, I ate vegan. <laughs> so I really love the distinction you brought up between hemp nutrition and CBD. So maybe just go a little bit deeper, again, for people who are just hearing about this, why is that distinction important? And what does it mean in terms of like, for example, some of the food that you, that you produce? Well, yeah, I mean, it's very important. I mean, I, I love CBD. Um, it, it, it's a great product, you know, properly sourced and made and so forth and so on. But there is, you know, CBD is more from the flower, F-L-O-W-E-R, because there's hemp flower as in F-L-O-U-E-R <laughs> that you bake with. Um, but, you know, CBD is typically uh, processed from the actual flower, the bud of the plant, um, you know, minus the THC. And it's, you know, pressed more of an oil form. There's isolates and things like that. But you don't that's not in the pure plant protein form. The hemp seed is a pure plant protein. It's got your soluble, insoluble fibers. It's got all known 20 amino acids, the nine of which we do not produce. Um, it really is one of the most nutrient dense foods you can eat in the seed form. While CBD is more of like you're taking your vitamin but yet hemp seeds have vitamins too. So a lot of overlap, but yet very distinct. Yes, um, I mean, I like to say you are what you eat in a lot of ways, so, but CBD does not replace hemp seed nutrition and hemp seed nutrition does not replace CBD. Oh, they complement one another. That's really helpful. Yes, um, think of one as like a body and brain oil and then one as a all over just food that's nutrient dense for your whole body because um, you've got you know even with the seed like with you eating my product um, you're getting your omega-3 and 6 you're even getting a um, natural antibiotic called Ediston um, they've discovered that's in hemp and it's one of the few uh, properties that they've found that isn't a food um, it's, it's an amazing, I can't wait to see over the coming years where hemp's going to be in not only just with, you know, plastics and progression like that, but just with all the amazing foods. We've got some small companies like hemp ice cream and things like that, but we're going to see some major progression over the coming years. So, so hearing you talk, I'm getting really hungry. So it, it seems like for the next follow-up conversation we have, I would love to sort of be around the food, talk with you more. Hey, you should come to the kitchen sometime. That would be great. Um, and this industry, obviously we have a role to educate people, to feed people, to make sure there's health and wellness. At the same time, there's always conversations that could be either repetitive and redundant because of the education and the amount of it we have to do, but also it's kind of comical. So for example, my mother, if I was to present to her a hemp breakfast sausage, she would say, I don't want to get high. So, so tell us about one of these reoccurring conversations that you have had, and maybe how do, you, how do you know that you've been successful to move people to think differently about you know, hemp food? I do have to say I live in a little bit of a bubble. Um, I just went to an event this past weekend, and it was a very um, allergen-friendly event had nothing to do with hemp, nothing to do with CBD, and quite frankly, really nothing to do with nutrition. 
It was the most unique event I've ever done in five years. I had a lot of eye rolls. Um, it was interesting. I realized that we have a long way to go with hemp education because I even paid attention and I saw the CBD booth across from me. They didn't even have close to the amount of people that were at my booth, but the people that were at that booth wanted to be at that booth. Does that make sense? Some people got so-called tricked into my booth because there was food and there were samples and they didn't look at the company or the name. And then they got up and they're trying the food and they're like, oh, you're feeding me marijuana. And it was really interesting. One lady even slapped the sample out of her son's hand. Oh my gosh, afraid it was a drug that you were giving the child. Yes, um, and I, I've literally, I do food demos at Lucky's because my, my product's carried at Lucky's, it's cut, you know, carried at Alfalfa's. I've been doing demos for years. I've not one time, not once, ever had that experience. So it was a little unique for me, it, but it, it, it showed me that we, have, we still have a lot, even in Colorado, we still have a long way to go with educating the public and for them understanding firefighters aren't allowed to eat hemp food, which I think is a travesty, the fact that our firefighters need to be healthy, their brains and their bodies, and they're told they can't eat hemp food because of risk of THC contamination. Oh, wow. I mean, this is really important, Carla. Let's um, take a break. You're watching Getting High on Anthropology. This is Mario Tanya's. Uh, we're going to take a break. You're going to watch a digital story about um, cannabis produced by students in a course at CU Denver called Cannabis Culture. Hope you enjoy the video. We'll be right back. I've wanted to be a part of the cannabis industry ever since I got my first medical card. I knew I wanted to be a mother for much longer than that. The opportunity finally arose for me to get into the cannabis industry in the summer of 2017. This is the year I found myself to be pregnant with my son, Vincent. The following two years would show me just how many regulations of people I've never met would go into my journey as a bud tender and a mother. The joy of landing my first job in the marijuana industry was tempered with a steady fear. I already knew that I was about three months pregnant. Cannabis is a male-dominated industry, so I knew that I would have to hide my pregnancy for at least the probationary period of 90 days if I wanted to keep my new job. I was painfully aware of Colorado being an at-will state for companies. I didn't put it past anyone to fire a person they knew would be leaving in a short amount of time. During my first healthcare visit, my OBGYN told me about the changes to the state's regulations regarding THC in pregnancy. My OBGYN has the option to run a full drug panel on me at 20 weeks of gestation, and I can't refuse it. If the panel shows signs of THC or any drugs in my system, Child Protective Services will have to be contacted and I could lose my child. It worried me to hear the news. As a new bud tender, I had no idea how much THC I could absorb through my skin just by handling cannabis. I had no idea whether my pregnancy would be a miserable or enjoyable experience. I quit cold turkey after several years of chronic use. There was no way I was going to let my baby be taken from me. As time went on, customers asked me about my favorite strains, coworkers invited me out to consume with them. It was not difficult to dodge these. Meanwhile, I looked forward to the life developing inside me. Certain coworkers of mine soon realized the cause of the eating habits and fatigue that came with the first trimester of my pregnancy. When it came time for me to tell upper management, I had a support network of women behind me. They made sure I was keeping hydrated and eating the right things. I was provided extra time on my breaks after my return from maternity leave so I could pump. After Vincent arrived, new challenges arose. I was free to consume again, but I refrained for another six months while I breastfed my son. There simply wasn't enough evidence showing that cannabis use doesn't affect newborns. A newborn's brain development is so precise and crucial at that age, I wasn't going to risk it. Besides, I had already stopped for nine months. What was six more months going to do? One early morning at work, protesters visited my store and left baby bibs that read, Don't Hurt Our Future, signed Colorado Kids. I've also gone through sting operations conducted by organizations like Mothers Against Marijuana. 
These protests really are stark reminders of how society continues to stigmatize a cannabis-consuming mother. Welcome back to Getting High on Anthropology. We're talking about hemp nutrition and hemp wellness today. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about this kitchen that you said you have and what exactly, if we go into the kitchen, would we see? And then what do you do in the kitchen? Oh, you would be a little surprised. It's a pretty bare bones kitchen. It's uh, pretty simplistic, but it's where all the magic happens. Um, I My kitchen's actually in Kittredge, Colorado. It's the very first kitchen that Honey Smoked Salmon Fish Company got their start out of a long time ago. So it's got some really good mojo. Um, so that's my commercial kitchen. I just share it with another small, um, she's newly starting a hemp spice company. Um, so we share it together. And I've been there for four years. Uh, as of March, it was my four, I've been there for four years and it's been a great kitchen. I absolutely love it. It's small, so you walk in, it's kind of in the very back. Um, you'd never even know I was back there. It's kind of got a little mountain in the back. A little deer come out beside my window, so it's really picturesque. Across the street, there's a beautiful little stream going through. Um, so it's elk. It's pretty ideal, actually. <laughs> So if we're with you, tell us about, in the kitchen, one or two of your favorite things to make and then the kinds of responses that you've gotten. Well, you know, my product's pretty unique and I'm actually a very unique company. Uh, my primary base is, you know, my hemp burger, my crumble, and then now the, the new uh, breakfast sausage. And I supply to restaurants and retail, but I found uh, caterers weren't wanting to carry my food. So that's kind of how the catering piece started. I didn't really ever want to cater, but caterers wouldn't carry my food and everybody's calling me, Carla, can't you cater? Carla, can you please cater? And so I, I do it on the side a little bit. Um, brunch is probably one of, well, brunch and dinner, because I love doing the um, slide, burger slider selection. Those are fun with just a bunch of different toppings. What would be the varieties of the toppings that you have? Oh, I love doing a caprese. Uh, with, um, I can keep it vegan even and do a Caprice because there's a, a really amazing uh, vegan cheese company called Peaceful Rebel and her mozzarella melts. So when my customers want to keep it vegan, you know, completely plant-based, I can get her cheese and do still the Caprice with, the, with the, basil, the basil, the meltable mozzarella, the hemp burger on a toasted brioche bun. It is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it sounds really delicious. So um, just so people understand, um, you mentioned caters. What would be one of the reasons a caterer would not be interested to carry your, your product? You know, I've been doing this for many years, so I feel it's kind of an old hat to me, but it's still a unique food, and that's what I have to realize, that I was so ahead of the curve by, you know, making this really unique, very versatile food. And it, it's just a different concept. And again, it's still, we're stuck in the stigma in a lot of ways. So I've gotten a few, you know, independent caterers that use my food and do, absolutely love it. But it's, it's coming, it's coming. We're, it's just a slow progress with, you know, educate, educate and more educate. Now, as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman, as a hemp chef, maybe that's also appropriate for your work, what advice would you have for someone? Let's say um, one of my students in the University of Colorado, Denver, really loves the work you, you're doing and they want to get into it. Um, what advice would you give to them to be successful with their hemp business? Independently, you need to have more passion than you ever could think of having because there's going to be days when you're going to be tested beyond belief and you're going to have to pull from that from the very ounce of your soul and then your your support team your support team is something because there's going to be days where you want to give up you need those people to talk to you need those people to bounce ideas off you need them to run to and they they need to also help you celebrate because there's going to be people you run to to celebrate because you can't celebrate with everybody there's successes you can't share. 
Um, so your team is vital. And I, you know, one of the biggest things I learned was recently I got a consultant and I've been doing this on my own for so many years and I've had old other consultants approach me. I can't afford it. You know, I can't afford it. It's been one of the most vital key pieces because it's, it's allowed this minutia to come out of my mouth to get translated in a very eloquent form and very business-like and it's opened my eyes and, and opened so many new opportunities just in a month and a half, two months. It's been great. So think outside of the box a lot. That's vital. Now, since you've been involved um, with hemp and food, have you found the market shifting a bit? Obviously, we have to educate people, and we still find a lot of people sort of entrapped by the prohibition ideology, conflating hemp and marijuana. But what kind of shifts or innovations have you seen in the market? I mean, all of a sudden. You know, we've got a lot of innovative products out there that you would never, and here's the cool part, some things you would never even know hemp was in. My company, it's very loud and proud. You know it's hemp. Um, Hail Mary, they're an um, allergen-friendly treat. They have um, brownie bites, little tarts. They're gluten-free, dairy-free. They have a hemp brownie bite, and it's got a good amount of hemp in it. I'm very impressed. Um, another local, uh, they're, not, they're local to California, but they're growing out here, the coconut. Uh, company or the real coconut, I think that's what they're called. They're little coconut tortillas and chips. They have cookies with hemp. So super impressed. Um, I love seeing that. I, I love seeing just the little subtleties, even though I'm very loud and proud and hey, look at this plant. Um, but I love seeing some of these mainstream companies with the small subtleties and I see it progressing. I, I think in the next year we're going to see hemp all over the marketplace from beverages and treats but also mainstream foods, like mine. Yeah, it's really taking off, and obviously we need to see uh, more jumps, but in terms of the regulatory framework that um, you have to sort of look to for guidelines, what one change would you like to see to allow yourself to become, uh, I don't know, to grow bigger, assuming you want to expand? Is there anything in the regulatory environment that you'd like to see changed, and, and why? You know, technically the farm bill cured my national distribution goals. For someone who doesn't know what the farm bill is, could you explain oh, that? The farm bill basically allowed industrial hemp uh, into national distribution where there's still some states that farmers are not allowed to grow hemp, but it still made it legally on a federal level, therefore hemp foods and products should be able to be in all states, um, all over the U.S. That's what the Farm Bill did um, in a lot of ways, amongst other things. Um, there's crop insurance and, um, you know, tons of, you know, other little intricacies. Um, but as far as, you know, that took care of that realm, but we're, I mean, we're still very lacking in the funding. Um, I had a, I guess, I don't know if they were venture capitalists, I don't know what type of company it was, but in order to get 100,000, they wanted to, me to pay them 18,000 up front, and then I was on a 10% interest rate. Wow, so what was the reason for these kinds of requirements? Just because they were the uncertainty, or? Yes. And because I can't go to a bank. You know, I mean, and I can get small equipment loans and things like that, but to really, in that, you know, small, like four or 5,000, like through Mikasa, things like that. There's little small, but as far as some of the bigger things, like, you know, looking at, you know, a $50,000 machine or something to really help get you in another state, the banks won't talk to you. So you're having to go to some of these very, I mean, 20 and 30% interest rate. Which is and, pretty high. Yeah, I, and I don't know how a company can survive on that because, especially with food, whew, margins are slim. <laughs> yeah. So just telescoping forward, let's say it's um, 
May 2020. Where do you imagine you want to go with your company? Oh, we've actually, we've got some really cool things uh, actually in the works right now. I'm about to launch uh, Cooking with the Hemp Food Lady. It's a po I'm starting it off as a podcast, but I just want to find the right type of uh, film scenario and uh, financially feasible scenario, but I want it filmed at, eventually here soon to where almost kind of a talk show cooking show uh, where my guests come on and we cook and eat hemp and kind of talk about hemp. Uh, but for now, it's starting off as a podcast. That'll be launching here in just a few weeks because we have six, we have a few uh, months recording already done on that. That sounds really fun. <laughs> it, it's I'm really excited. What would be one or two of the themes that you want to get started with when you do the podcast, like topics of the show? Uh, a lot of it has been, we've talked about um, CBD and hemp, the differences, those types of things. A lot of the guests uh, on the recordings that I've done, that's kind of what we've talked about and been some of the main topics. Uh, a couple different featured, um, I, I featured a, um, a children's friendly cannabis book. We talked about that. So, And those are good to have. Many parents um, understand the normalization of cannabis is here. And so to have those discussions with children uh, to let them know that this is something, a resource available to them. You mentioned food, fuel, and what was the third one? Few, food, fuel, and fiber. Yeah, these are three great pillars that I think all children should know about. So I think the book you mentioned is great. We're running out of time, yeah. but I think many people who watch this might be interested to learn about the work you're doing. So how can people get a hold of you? And then just one more time, what, what kind of services could people um, uh, benefit from through uh, meeting you and, and actually having some kind of relationship with you? Um, well, for one, I love to educate, I'm, and I love to feed. I'm Southern, so providing food to people is really fun. Um, so just, I, I, love, I like talking about hemp and educating on hemp. That's I, a very big passion of mine. Um, as far as looking me up, um, hempwayfoods.com is my uh, website. I'm available. My products, you can always go to Lucky's, Alfalfa's, Nooch Market. City Grill is a great uh, restaurant in Denver to go eat my food. They're so amazing. I love those guys. Um, and then, so yeah, and then anybody can always um, give me a call. I'm very active on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Shoot me a message those ways. And do you have a website um, for the podcast, or they could just visit the website you just mentioned? Oh, I apologize. Yes, I, uh, it's in the works right now, uh, Cooking with the Hemp Food Lady. But it will be fed through my website as well. Um, but we, we're in the midst of building that piece right now. Excellent. Carla, I want to thank you, and I learned a lot. Um, I'm really thirsty, uh, I'm sorry, hungry to eat some of the food that you mentioned and to try it and make it a regular part of, of my um, uh, you know, food ways. So I want to um, thank you for being on the show, and then also I hope this is the beginning of a couple discussions we can have because I can see an interest in making sure more people know about this stuff, and of course with all the catering events that are out there, I mean, hemp food should be front and center in a lot of these different events.